welcome Star Wars Force Arena players to this brand new update video. Um, the patch notes have gone live. There is a link below, so feel free to check them out at your leisure. Um, I'll go through the critical stuff that's coming in the game, and then I'll kind of just go through rapidly the quality of life changes that's coming to the game as well. There isn't too much to talk about. There are some good stuff coming to the update. Um, and we'll look at those in detail, in addition, of course, to, to the two new leaders that are coming in a seven-day login event. But let's jump into that right now, and I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments below. Now, we are getting six new cards, which is a surprise. Um, so we are getting, obviously, Ahsoka. We're getting Rex. So bonus points to you guys who called out Rex as her unique. We're getting a B-Wing um, epic card. We're getting Gore Saxon. Uh, Imperial Super Commandos and also a TIE Defender as the epic card for the dark side, the Rebels and the dark side. All the cards, the unique cards and the leader cards are unlocked at tier 9 and the epics are unlocked at tier 10 for both sides. So it's quite, in and these, they're quite indifferent between the two of those cards is quite striking actually as well, but we'll talk about that in detail. So first up we've got Ahsoka. Um, if I can just squeeze those stats in as well, just about, there you go. Um, so again, feel free to have a read of this. So her attack power is 87, DPS is 159, health is quite high at 1,180, attack speed is rapid, 0.55 seconds, 4.5 movement speed, so it's like a poof, gone, and a range is obviously melee unit. So uh, her leader skills, determined pursuit, increases movement speed by 100% when approaching enemy turrets or leaders. So imagine how with Anakin right now, you drop her in the battlefield as a unique and she just charges like a maniac to the turret. Rah! And that, I think that's how it would be with this. Triple slash um, quickly closes on enemies and slashes them with lightsabers to deal damage equal to 150% of attack power. The skill can be used consecutively up to three times with a brief cooldown between uses and the third use deals a double damage. Cooldown 30 seconds on that one, overall cooldown. And again, all these stats are based on level one, bear that in mind. Here's her backstory. And then Rex, this is an interesting one actually with Rex. Um, cost three energy, attack power 117, DPS 117, stun duration 2.2 seconds, health 900, which is quite a lot. So I think it'd be very tanky. Attack speed one, 2.3 movement speed, attack range 6.75, targets everything, there's no choice there. Um, and as it says there, tosses a special grenade that can stun enemy tech units and leaders or disable structures for a certain period of time. Um, and that is going to be an interesting play, because obviously he's very tanky. So he could potentially um, do like a chopper, well, although chopper disables the turret completely, like an R2 for example can probably just stop the turret from shooting for a duration of time before it fires again and then stops. See how that plays out. But 2.2 seconds at level 1 is quite a lot of stun. Let me know what you guys think about that. And there's his backstory there. B-Wing. This is an interesting card to add. It's a prototype B-Wing, whatever that means. Um, it costs 5 energy, but look at the damage it does. 1,320 1, leader squad attack power. It's a huge amount. Structure damage as well, 528. I'm not sure how that compares to Wiring Bomber, um, but I think it'll be up there, if not more than that, because Wiring, bearing in mind in the, in the Star Wars universe, is the older bombing version, and the B-Wing prototype is obviously the newer one, but obviously it's a prototype, so that could be why it's not as powerful, perhaps, possibly. Targets anything. Now, it has got a very narrow range of effect, so it's not very wide. 17 length, so it's quite long, um, and deployment time 1.5 seconds. So it says here, fires a powerful composite laser beam that deals strong damage in a straight line. So like a rail gun, for example, just straight line, dun, 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 everything would be obliterated. So you have to really, really pinpoint exactly where you want that and be um, accurate as you possibly can. Unlocks at tier 10. And there's a the backstory there for it all, which is quite interesting. Moving on to the dark side, Gore Saxon, i have pronounced his name wrong probably, I don't watch Star Wars Rebels, I'm sorry. Um, and he's got his attack power at 76, DPS 112, health 980, attack speed 0.75, targets anything, obviously he's a leader, um, 2.6 movement speed and a range of 7. So it's quite a good range for a leader, um, above, above most of the Rebel leaders, uh, but not the best, obviously, because Snoke's up there, Cassian as well, it springs to mind. Leader skills are interesting. Jetpack Evasion uses a jetpack to fly when double tapped, continuously consumes stamina, that's that yellow bar you see under all the leaders, 
while flying to avoid enemy attacks. When attacking while flying, focus fires a blast arrival to deal damage equivalent equal to 200% of attack power before landing. Quite powerful actually. And this is what sounds amazing to me. The wrist rocket soars into the air and launches a mini rocket to deal an area of effect damage AOE um, equal to 300% of attack power. If there are Imperial Super Commanders on the battlefield, both units launch a combined rocket attack to deal 120% damage of the Super Commander's damage, obviously attack power as additional damage. Cannot be targeted while using this skill. 34 second cooldown. And it's going to be really good to see when you're with your leader and you attack a turret for argument's sake and he soars up in the air with this rocket, the Imperial Commanders will actually fly up as well into, into action. I can't wait to see that animation. I mean, you know, for all the game's full flaws and faults and things, animations and, and that is nailed by Netmarble. Net, Netmarble nailed that. I don't know a better game, mobile, especially a mobile game, that has animations like this in the Star Wars game, let me tell you. And again, that's his backstory there. Uh, so feel free to pause the video and read through that. Here are the Super Commanders. They look really cool, as Super Commanders do. Cost of Energy 3, again, the same as what Rex does cost. 76 attack power, DPS 76. Deploys in pairs. 679 health, attack speed of 1 second, a targets anything, there's no re preference, 2.5 movement speed in a range of 7, which is the same as him. So, as it says here, if Gar Saxon uses his skill, Imperial Super Commanders will fly with him and launch rockets that deal massive area of damage. I can't wait to watch, that's going to be so, so cool to watch when that happens. TIE Defender, cost 5 energy, same as the B-Wing. Um, I look at the damage, it's so low. Um, leader squad power. 306. It's not really a card you'd be using on leaders or on units or even on turrets um, for that matter of it. I mean, you could obviously take out organic units with it, but the damage it does is quite low for level 1. Um, so it says here, fires 6 missiles that target enemies with a within a certain range. It's got quite a range, wide range of 7, so it's almost like the T-70 range. Um, the more missiles... Um, it, it, so, so let's say that again. Fire six missiles that target enemies within a certain range and deal intense area of effect damage. The more enemies in range, the more missiles will spread. So it's like almost like a scattergun effect, um, and like shrapnel, if you will. So if you've got like a group of enemies, and the range will extend, I imagine, if they're just close to each other, so like like a shrapnel thing. So imagine like the Talaz army, well, they'd be obliterated. But then again, you'd sneeze and they just drop dead. Um, but it does say if there's only one enemy on the map, it will focus that enemy with massive damage. So imagine how Poe Dameron's airstrike worked on his special ability. I imagine it'd be the same along the same sort of lines as this. How that works, where it targets enemies and just obliterates it with intense firepower. So balance unit changes now. This is where it gets a bit disappointing so far. Um, but don't switch off yet because it does get better. Um, unit balance adjustments. So right now we've got Ezra been changed. Um, it's just really a health. It's not really a buff. It's just a a, a, a change really. So um, Ezra, if you play Ezra, if his health is less than forty percent, um, all organic units gain a ten percent attack speed advantage. Um, but so they're changing now to each time Ezra's health drops below ten percent, um, Ezra and his organic allies attack speed is increased by 3% so you drop down 10% you get 3% attack speed increase and also once he drops dead the, the boost goes so you could sit all game in the corner uh, like practically like, hardly any health <laughs> you could just increase your unit's attack speed we'll have to try that in a video one day um, and there you go it tells you about the, he um, the health packs as well and, and as an example if you have 50% hit points you obtain a Hit pa health pack that restores your hit points to 80%. The attack speed buff will be reduced from 15 to 6% because you've obviously picked up the health pack and so your health is increased. Amalul Zazul Spotter, he's had a bat range adjusted. So because he's with Cassian and Cassian's got that special, his special abilities where you gain all range units gain one extra one, it meant that because he had a range of eight, this guy had like massive range and could sit outside the turret radius and just melt turrets on his own. Um, not so much in 2v2, but in 1v1 certainly, because he was a cheap card to get, um, and you could really, really boost him up relatively quickly. So a lot of people were all using him with Cassian in um, in the game, but Cassian didn't really make much of a comeback because he is really 
a week leader. But that's an interesting change, but the range has been reduced by slightly a little bit, but it will become in range of turrets now going forward. This is an interesting change here. Phoenix Squadron and Republic Commando. Balance adjustment made. So, but either one of these on the battlefield um, gives 50% additional damage to nearby units. The center of Phoenix Squadron, Phoenix 1 and Republic Commando units that have been a wide range of attacks and have developed to effectively subdue enemies. However, both units have no special features compared to other range troops, which were felt especially in situations where they encountered melee troopers. In this update, both units will be will be improved so they can deal additional damage to nearby enemies. So this is, it gives additional 50% damage to nearby units. Does it say, I imagine it would be both units like tech and also um, organic? So it just says nearby units. It doesn't say if it's organic or not. So that's an interesting one. And then the final, the final one, it is a final one unfortunately, is the Imperial Jump Trooper. This is an interesting one. Um, they're changing the unit count from four down to three because now you can now will be able to deploy it on the map anywhere so right now you have to deploy it within your area of your map uh, but right now like a drop pod for the rebels you can just drop it on the map anywhere they'll fly in and attack but i don't know yet if they'll attack the turret or if they'll like to do right now is that you drop them and they'll just attack the first thing they see um so that'd be interesting because it'd be kind of pointless to drop on the turret behind enemy lines and then they backtrack to attack organic units that are on the map because they just get killed so have to see how that, how, how that pans out interesting though could be a game change in 2v2 have to wait and see it will be interesting um, the cost of it just stays the same and this is where Netmarble have reached out to the player base with victory ward improvements um, so right now obviously we need to get 17 wins a day to get any kind of rewards which is ridiculous because it just catapults players to the whales and then you just give up playing the game and then you uninstall it because you just you want to get your rewards obviously um, but you end up playing players that are far far stronger than you and you just uninstall um, now bearing in mind when i talk about things like this people will say to me oh yeah but you're this and the other i don't really care what other people say about me but all i care about is players especially those players who are not pros at the game who just want to have some fun in the game that's what, I, that's what I always think about when I look at these updates and changes in the game. How will a new player respond? How will a player who doesn't spend much money, if any money at all, how will they benefit or lose out on these changes? That has always been my mantra when I play this game. So the changes are being made there where you're now going from 17 wins down to just 9. They will be adjusting the rewards. So do they say get more? Which would be interesting to see how that works as well. Um, the participation rewards remains the same so that means if you lose matches you currently play 10 games you get credits for that will stay the same that's not not it's not been adjusted at all um, and they understand difficulty qualities are facing as a rank increases since facing tougher opponents will make it more challenging to win um, I, I don't see how it's gonna make much of a difference is it'll make some obviously but it, you know it is a tough one right now because it just aren't the number of plays in the game to balance this out correctly victory boosts have been changed as well so rather than get 50 percent boost you get 100 percent boost i'm on the fence about these because i don't think they really benefit um they do obviously when you start using them but when you reach your max games of the day which is now down to nine wins um, and your rewards uh, on reset on cooldown you can't use it anymore so under the old system at least you had packs on cooldown that you could constantly unlock because of the auto unlock but now this will just sit here wasted for like eight hours, nine hours, perhaps maybe more, where it's doing nothing. Mm, you know, it's not really good. Um, so again, that'd be interesting to see. But it's, it's still welcome for those of you, especially in the ranked players. That's a good bonus for those guys who, who do spend a lot of money in the game. Data card, I've had some improvements made, mostly to the UI. So I'll breeze through this quickly. So again, pause the video if you're going to read any of this. But just changing how the UI, how you can now filter out units here. So right now you can't really do that, but you can now filter between rebels and stuff to make it easier to, to select decks. Um, they've improved the synergy condition guidance. It is difficult to understand the synergy reward system, so making it clearer for that to work. They're also improving the grade grading of the cards. So right now you get little stars, but now they've changed just grade one to two, three to four, five to six, etc. To make it easier to know. And then this change is a good one. You can now view the reward that you get for using a synergy leader. The data card missions, the only thing they the only purpose they serve is to make you upgrade your leader. That's the only reason. And the synergy reward is tied into that. 
a lot of you like to play a certain type of leader or have your favorite leaders and why not why wouldn't you um, and the idea of this is that you use a synergy leader to get better rewards but the rewards have always been meh and you can't always see what the rewards are so now you can check to see are they is it worth me playing this leader you can do that and again ui changes to the set bonuses now rather than it all being dribbled out like it was you now got a bit of a clearer way of displaying things upgrading the cards as well and this is much better as well because right now you have to scroll through the set bonus but here it just be displayed on one screen other ui improvements there as well to data cards again pause the video perk systems had a ui change the perk system isn't being changed it's just adding some sound effects Ooh, um, and some ui changes that's really it to the perk system again ui improvements rank systems um the ui is changing slightly um there's no changes at all to matchmaking which is really disappointing i would like to see some changes again but you know it is what it is right now um so rather than displaying a percentage of where you are you just get a rank number if you are ranked right now and then again in brackets between like it is there um and notifications as well being improved slightly this is a good change pick a win we all hate pick a win and the reason for that is because you have to watch the game but right now what they're doing now is that you could actually now view the result automatically without having to watch the game hooray i know jingle bells so you, you get an automatic chance there to view the results or watch the, if you want to watch the game you watch the game if it's a good play get some ideas for some decks and things um so now it means you can breeze through these relatively quickly and then do your daily which is awesome and if you accidentally press play um, you can press pause and obviously then you can view the result again straight away and get an automatic result without having to watch the entire game which is really cool and that brings me on to the credit system um, daily mission is the most reliable source of credits and thus a must have content in this game however it seems that squad leaders deserve something more you know, too right do we in addition to the credit packs a bonus reward system has been added for more bonuses and how this works is now if you manage to, to acquire two credit packs a day and if you're at lower level it's not going to be possible because you just haven't got enough slots but the higher tier you go you get more chances to acquire tickets as you can see on the right hand side um, and if you do manage to collect enough 10 basically for two for two rounds of packs you qualify for a bonus and it'll be one of these here um, two four six eight as you can see there so again feel free to pause the video if you want to read through that there so that's quite a welcome change daily credit supply improvements the importance of credits has significantly has increased significantly yes it has thus to help our squad leaders a daily credit supply which provides credits for each player login has been improved doesn't say watch but how much but we'll take that as well other changes i'll breeze through these and the uis are having a four card added to the leader defeated screen um, big deal oh look you've been killed by a leader with a four card thank you very much uh, this is a key change so if you haven't linked your account to game center or google play do that uh, especially if you're making in-app purchases because there's a chance you might lose everything and now it's going to warn you about that before you buy anything added two new missions to the character gallery um, added an icon so you can check your network status during gameplay added some cards um, that can be acquired from guaranteed pack will be consistent regardless of the ranking if your cards are max it now say max at the end there so you know you've maxed out for those of you who don't pay any money you won't know about that <laughs> none of us know about that apart from the whales and again improve the ui on certain things fix an issue with resistant sniper sometimes stopping attacking enemies within range fix an issue with data card increased duration of units negative status effects ai has been improved in troopers so they can quickly detect and respond to enemies in battlefield fix an issue with some effects and positions and things so um yeah that's that is your lot that is your update everyone let me know what you guys think in the comments below have to see how it goes out in practice don't we i suppose um welcome changes the new cars sound exciting I, lo I know a lot of you have asked for soak and rex and that's fantastic for you guys to get that in the game can't wait to see you guys playing that um, and i will try and do a live stream as well for those of you who might not have the card yet or have a chance to watch to play the game i'll do a video or live stream whichever it will be showing you the animations and all the attacks and i'll do some videos like i did before where i'll just play a couple of games get to the ai or something so you guys can see what the leaders are like in combat that is of course if i get them unlocked but i have to let you I have to let you know um, and that is it thanks so much for watching and a big big thank you to everybody i've now reached over 2,000 subscribers which is insane to think where the channel was just 
um, a year and a half ago. And I am trying to put together a montage video of some best moments. Um, so if you guys have any best moments of videos that I've made or live streams that I've done, timestamp it below and I'll try and have a look at those and include that in a montage video. Uh, it's my way of saying thank you to you guys for your support. Um, it has been a rocky ride, but you know we're still there, we're hanging on. Hope has been restored. May the force be with you.